company owns all the stations, they just consolidate it all. And there's a real dispute about this. It's an interesting dispute. I don't know that anybody's ever gotten to the bottom of it. I've seen so many different stories. Late at night, at 2 in the morning, in fact, a, a train comes through Minot, North Dakota, and with anhydrous ammonia cars, derails, goes off the tracks, splits some anhydrous ammonia cars, and this, this deadly plume envelops the city at 2 a.m. Caused a death, caused many, many injuries. Many went to the hospital. It caused great fright among a population, not knowing what was happening, and we discover later great danger to the population. Well, the emergency uh, broadcast uh, function somehow didn't work, but notwithstanding the fact the system didn't work, they couldn't get anybody to answer the telephone at the local radio station. All commercial stations owned by the same company from another state. One wonders, what if those stations were owned by individual operators that lived in town? You think you'd be able to track somebody down? I guess so. Now, the chairman of the Federal Communications Commission is, is galloping off to relax media ownership rules because he thinks that's really what's necessary. Met with him today, and I said, you know what's really necessary, and he knows this because Senator Lott and I have both told him, is do the first things first. One, do a proceedings on localism to find out how has all of this concentration affected localism. That is, we provide free licenses to use the airwaves for television and radio in exchange for which they are responsible to provide local interests, to serve local interests. So do we know what they're doing? No. The chairman of the Federal Communications Commission has admitted to me they don't know how many people are voice tracking out there, how many radio stations are voice tracking. I'll give an example of voice tracking, an example of what the Federal Communications doesn't know. You're driving down the road on a bright Tuesday morning in Salt Lake City, Utah, and you got the radio on, turned to a dial with uh, some music and a, a disc jockey, and after the song ends, the disc jockey comes on and says, it's a great morning here in Salt Lake City. We got the sun coming up over the mountains. We got a blue sky. We've got a light five mile an hour wind. We're going to have a wonderful day, aren't we? Turns out the guy's broadcasting from a basement studio in Baltimore, Maryland, pretending he's in Salt Lake City simply ripping information from the internet to say it's a bright sunny day here in Salt Lake City. That's called voice tracking. It's let's pretend. Does that serve local interest? It sure doesn't. So how many stations do this? How prevalent is that practice? Don't know. Neither does the FCC. How about starting a proceeding on localism to find out whether those that are using the public airwaves free of charge, airwaves that belong to the American public, not the licensees, how about finding out how they are serving local interests? Or how about a proceeding dealing with public interest standards because there are public interest requirements for the holding of a license for television or radio broadcast? How about first things first? Why the rush to provide more concentration in radio and television and cross ownership with newspapers? The chairman would say, well, I'm not trying to do more concentration in radio and television. I'm trying to allow newspapers now to begin buying television stations. Why? Well, he said the newspapers aren't doing very well. He said, when did it become the job of the Federal Communications Commission to be the bookkeeper for newspapers? My understanding about newspapers is that they used to have a 40, 35, 45 percent net income. Now it's dropped to 15 or 18 percent net. Pretty good profit compared to all other industries. All of a sudden, the FCC thinks that the newspapers are having financial trouble, and so they should relax the rules to allow cross-ownership. I just think it's wrong. And Senator Lott and I offered the amendment today in the Commerce Committee. That amendment was agreed to unanimously. And my hope is that the chairman of the Federal Communications Commission is watching and listening. Because this Congress, on a bipartisan basis, says no to uh, further relaxing the controls on cross-ownership. And this Congress, on a bipartisan basis, I feel strongly, believes that we have too much concentration in the media. The chairman of the Federal Communications Commission believes apparently we need more. He is just dead wrong. My hope is that uh, in the coming couple of weeks he will understand that it would be the best course for the Federal Communications Commission. It would be wise for the chairman uh, to decide not to advance to a December 18th uh, final vote on the rule that he is proposing. It is not in the public interest. It is not doing what the FCC should do. My hope is he will instead open a public interest proceeding and open a localism proceeding and finish it to its conclusion and do a good job on it. That would be a public service for this country. 
Mr. President, I yield the floor and I make a point of order that the quorum is not present. Uh, the clerk will call the roll of the Senate. Mr. Akaka.